Hi, and thank you for everybody for watching this. Uh, my name is Brooke Jolly. I'm doing this presentation on the behalf of the Independent Life Insurance Agents Association. Um, this webinar is the introduction to online marketing. Um, what this website or what this uh, website, what this uh, webinar is going to cover, is the way to get a start in online marketing. How to use WordPress effectively. How to actually determine what to blog about, so that uh, when you do your blogging, uh, you actually will see results. Um, and how to use other forms of online media. Uh, most of your online marketing is done by one of these things. Either build a website, you go to some place, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, any other, LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube. Those are social media sites. Uh, that's the, kind of the second leg. Uh, video sites, YouTube again, and you got got... Uh, several other places that you can actually go like Vimeo, uh, Dailymotion, there's probably another 50 or 60 places you can go and post a video online to get backlinks or otherwise or to talk to people. Uh, press releases you can do out of any of the content that you use for blogging. Um, you can you put those in. The, the hope is that they'll get picked up and syndicated somehow onto a news site. Uh, forums, places online that you can go and talk to people obviously. Um, but you can also use them in a limited fashion for marketing. It's not not a good idea to run up in the forum and uh, be the guy that's the obnoxious self-promoter. But forums do have a value in their promotional ability. Um, also, email. Um, email is something that you can use either via autoresponders through renting lists and doing bulk mailings or any n other number of things that you can do with it. Um, email has a profound impact. It's It's... Technically, to me, I see it as the same thing as sending a letter now. Um, people do email to get the same response they would get by sending someone a well-crafted letter. Although, one of the, the big dangers of online marketing is that people do email badly. Um, so don't do that. But email is a great thing to do. So, so where would you start? Uh, let's say that you have just, you just started in business or you've been in business for five years, but you have never had a website. You have no content. You have no backlinks. Um, you've not started anything. Maybe you have a Facebook account that you just use for personal things. Um, and you've, you've never done any sort of website at all to even track and see what kind of movement you were getting out of your keywords. So where, where would you start? Like what's, the, what's the first step? And the, the answer to that is actually pretty simple. First step is going to be doing keyword research. Now, the reason why that should be your first step is because you don't want to rank unnecessarily for things that no one is searching for because that completely defeats the purpose. Um, furthermore, if you go out there and you create content to rank yourself either on purpose or inadvertently for terms that you will not make any money with, it can actually be counterproductive to your efforts, meaning you might go up for a term that no one searches for and down for the search term that would have made you money. Um, but all content creation should begin, if it's done correctly, it should begin with keyword research. And that's marketing content. Like if you're doing um, content to be helpful to your customers, that's a completely different thing. But when you're trying to do marketing content, it really needs to be keyword optimized. Um, honestly, your keyword research will probably take up 50% of the time that you spend in writing a marketing article if it's done correctly. Half your time is going to be in keyword research. The other half of your time is going to be spent in uh, actually writing the article. So how do you do that? The first step would be to look at uh, keyword or Google Keyword Suggest. You can get there by going to Google, typing Google Keyword Suggest, and it will show you how to open an AdWords account if you don't already have one, or it will take you straight there. You can type the word in and search. There, there are other softwares that you can use that uh, primarily still are using Google Keyword Suggest. However, they are going to Google Keyword Suggest, and then they are using metrics that they have established or that you have established inside the program to help you sort and filter. Um, my favorite, personally, is Market Samurai. My second favorite thing to use is Scrapebox. However, Scrapebox is not a good example of a, a introductory software for somebody to go out with. It's just something you can use. One of the things I honestly like to do with Scrapebox is go find a whole bunch of keywords, load them into Market Samurai, and analyze the keywords because it might find things that I wouldn't have thought of. Another thing you do is outsource it. Uh, awesome resource for outsourcing is Fiverr.com. That's uh, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. 
you can go there and get people to do keyword research for you for five dollars um, or you can go and pay someone two hundred and fifty dollars to do your keyword research for you and waste two hundred and fifty dollars um, you could have gone to Fiverr, spent 15 bucks, got keyword research from three places, compared what those three people said, and you've actually gotten a by committee keyword research done that you can compare to each other and determine what the what the most effective keywords three people told you were for 15 bucks rather than spending a fortune on it. Um, another thing you can also do, one of the important things you actually do want to establish some sort of metrics to determine um, whether or not the keywords that you're focusing on are actually valuable. A good way to look at that is if you have a program like Market Samurai or Traffic Travis or some other method for tracking down how many websites target up a specific term in specific places programmatically, then you can take that information, compare that with the number of or with the amount of competition overall, how many people target your specific keyword and what the page rank of those sites are, and you can determine the difficulty of ranking. Um, one of the best things to do though is to, to try to establish some sort of a metric for how difficult of something you are willing to invest the time in trying to rank for. Um, there are search terms that are fairly unassailable. Um, if you told me that you wanted to make a website to target diet pills, I would laugh at you. If you'd never done it before and didn't know what you were doing, it's likely never going to happen. You could likely spend your entire life trying to do that and never pull it off because there's so many affiliate marketers trying for that term. Um, however, if you're trying to target San Antonio auto insurance, probably got a heck of a lot better chance. So that's it's you got to establish some sort of a metric, find a keyword that people do search for, and then figure out what your competition level is going to be so you can see if you can rank for it. Um, why is this all important? Keywords are the importance of them is established in two ways. Way number one is people go to Google being Yahoo and they search for a term. That gives you the search volume. Google, Bing, and Yahoo are all interested in providing user experience. The best way to provide a user experience for someone is that when they search, you want it to be so that they've searched, they find a page, and the first page they find was the very best website in the entire world for what they searched for. It's relevant, it has exactly what they wanted, they can go on that site, and that site tells them exactly what they wanted to know. That's exactly what the search engines want to do. Um, they don't always succeed, but that's what, they, that's what they would prefer. However, the search results are done by machines. And you can only train a machine to do so well. So, you can think of it from the perspective of they know what people are looking for but they don't necessarily have a good way to determine what a site is about because the machines cannot, you can't train a machine to read like a human or determine how good something is. You could have humans go do it, but it would cost a fortune. Um, now Google's actually trying to do some of that to, to actually simulate it by having people um, use their own search engine. The Every time that you use Chrome, it is sending information back to Google if you opted into their program, which I don't know if they're doing it to people that just opted in or not, there's no way to prove it, they may be doing it to both. But if you opted in, they're using what your actions were when you were using their uh, web browser to determine the search, in res search engine results for other human beings uh, by tracking it and using it as a metric. And the same thing is being done by Internet Explorer. It wouldn't surprise me if the same thing was being done with Firefox and every other browser that there is. Nothing, nothing like that ever surprises me. But, but as for right now, machines are reading it. So you've got to make sure that the words that people are searching for are on your web page. Because when the machine is looking for the results, the only thing it can look for is them words. can't find those words. Your web page is not about them. So this is an example of uh, what you would get with Google Keyword Suggest. Um, now... I did a search for Tennessee Medicare. You can see that Tennessee Medicare has 3,600 searches a month, which in my view makes it a keyword that is worth targeting. Uh, the metrics that I prefer using is that something has search volume to provide in position one up to 25 clicks a day. That's what I look for. I've targeted things that I'm even only anticipating one or two clicks a day. I've targeted things before where I thought I might get three clicks a month. Um, to some degree, you do have to base this off of anticipated um, commission levels when you're talking about insurance or with any product. It's how much you anticipate that you're actually going to make. 
um, when you do that. So if you've got a term that's for something like dental insurance where you're going to make almost nothing, um, you would not necessarily want to target something where the search volume is this low or vice versa. That's an easy way. The second thing you want to look for, you want to target buying terms. Um, Signa Government Services, highly vulnerable, gets almost enough searches to get uh, 50 or so clicks a day. If you got lucky there, you can divide that by 30 and you can see how many searches a day. Top position normally gets 30% of the clicks. So that's the easy way to figure it out. Um, so you take that formula, 5400, divide 5400 by 30, you end up with uh, somewhere around 200 searches a day, multiply times 30% roughly 60, a little bit under 60 clicks you could anticipate in position one. But is the person searching for Cigna government services going to buy anything? The answer to that question is probably not. Probably not in that one either, which is, again is Cigna government services. For some reason Google is showing that one twice. Uh, it's because this one's a misspelling. Uh, then you've got Medicare Region B, Region A, Medicare pay increase, your health plan, that one actually might be worth targeting, but there's no way to know for sure without seeing what already ranks for it. Um, TenCare, terrible term. It's uh, That term is specifically about Medicaid. And people, and this is, I mean, not to not to sound like a bad person for saying it, but the, the people that are primarily searching for TenCare are looking to sign up for the government program for TenCare and are very unlikely to be purchasing private insurance, which is why... 33,000 searches, but almost no competition. Um, even the PPC ad's higher than I would think that it should be. The only reason that I could justify a PPC ad being $2 a click for this term is because it's being purchased by lead vendors and being used to convert into leads to sell to insurance agents, and they're competing over it. There's no justifiable reason for this to be a $2 a click term. Um, this is a, a search that I've reversed it and showed you what not to target. Like you might think Medicare gap insurance comparison. That sounds like a buying term. No one is searching for it. Competition's huge. Medicare replacement plans. No one is searching for it. Competition is huge. Medicare for dummies. Competition's mediocre, but no one's searching for it. So, the only time that you would ever want to target something no one's searching for now is if you think that there is a high likelihood that in the future someone is going to search for it. Um, and you want to cement a position. Otherwise, is utterly pointless. Uh, you don't want to do it. The only reason that you would want to do it, like I said, is if you foresee a likelihood of it coming in the future or if it's a term that you have a special interest in even though it's not being searched very many times. You want to catch all of it. Um, otherwise, it, it's, not a good, it's not a good expenditure of your time for marketing efforts. Um, now the best place to start, if you've not got anything, if you don't have, I don't have a website, I don't have a blog, I don't have uh, anything best place to start easily is by blogging. And the reason I say that, I can say it so confidently, is that what blogging does for you is allows you to create content. And the content that you create, if you do it correctly, is targeting keywords that you wanted. And if you're doing that part of it correctly and you're creating it on a schedule, you're using the keywords you wanted, you're getting links to yourself, you're establishing a web page that in the future Google is probably already paying attention to. You've already written your content, so when you want to change that page, the content's already there. You don't have to redo it. All you do is move the content into new places. You build a page around your content. The, the writing of content, correctly targeting keywords, and getting the site to rank is infinitely harder than building a pretty website. Building a pretty website involves either going and buying a pretty template and sticking your things into it. Building one yourself which again building the 10 page website by hand custom doing all the graphics is a 10 hour job for somebody that's moderately skilled that can do you can use photoshop or gimp or something like that and actually make graphics that's how long it takes um, comparatively writing good content and getting backlinks might take 10 hours a week or 10 hours a month for a year so you're talking about a difference in time of 10 hours one time and 10 hours 12 times. Um, and the content part is the part that if you're going to focus on anything, everyone can write content. Um, the, the importance is that any content that you do write, you want to use your keywords correctly, meaning you get your keywords from doing some research. You're going to spend 
as much time as you need until you believe that you have found a keyword that is worth targeting. You're going to put that keyword in your title of your article. You're going to put it in the H1 heading. You're going to put it in the description of the article. You're going to make tags in the article using it for WordPress. You're going to make your WordPress tags have that keyword in them. You're going to put that keyword in the body, and anytime you make a backlink, you're going to use this format so that your backlink, which is where it's going to, is your keywords. So that when Google sees this link, they say, oh, here's a link to this website. It is about these keywords. That's the point to writing them up that way. Um, whatever you're doing, writing. Keep it as interesting as you can. Um, it doesn't have to be like a technical analysis article of insurance or something that's about uh, product offerings or the most boring things you can think of. Um, I was doing a live webinar. We had a technical issue, so my audio didn't get recorded. But um, one of my favorite bloggers out there is a guy that I've read several of his blog articles because I find them amusing. Um, he's on the insurance forums as uh, Chumps from Oxford. His name is Ed, and I, for the life of me, can't think of his last name now. At least I remembered his name. Um, earlier, I couldn't even remember that. Ed's articles, he will go out and write things that are Monty Python level or... Uh, something that you would expect to see in a um, in a comedy article written somewhere but he keyword targets correctly inside that article he posts consistently he sends it out to people he links himself correctly so he does all the correct things with it and he probably gets more success out of doing that than a lot of people get writing technical articles because their technical articles are boring and no one wants to read them um, you can write beautiful technical articles about all kinds of aspects of insurance, but the reality is that most people are not interested in that. Um, people unmonitored, when they're going on the internet and reading things, uh, with the, the vast majority of people want to know how something works and how it relates to them, and if you can condense that down and make it entertaining, great. If you can't make it entertaining, probably not going to read it again. But uh, unless it's a inter an educational resource of some sort that does them some, has some value to them, where they're actually they might need to reference that later. So there, you know, there is a difference between a reference article and a marketing piece. But in most marketing articles, you're better off being entertaining than you are being technical. Um, being overly technical makes people not really care what you say; uh, it just bores them. So now this is an example, just a quick news post I did on my own website. You see, I've this is WordPress. This is my title. Here I've got a permalink, and in my WordPress I've got the settings set so that my permalinks are the date and the title, not the page equal to tag, because Google does, um, and Bing does, read the URL as part of the keyword decision. So you want the keywords to be there. You want the keywords to be here. You want the keywords in your tags. You want the keywords in your article and you want the keywords in your header and in this particular article I'm actually targeting two different keywords I'm targeting Tennessee Medicare and I'm targeting Medicare annual election period my hope is that by targeting them both because this is a blog post I don't expect to get a lot of direct um, direct visits or indexing on Google highly for the term Tennessee Medicare off of a blog post but when I backlink this, I can backlink it for both of those. I can also backlink it toward my main site, and I can backlink my main site for Tennessee Medicare, or I can backlink my main site for el annual election period, and I can backlink this article for that, and it's relevant to everything, so Google sees it all as being relevant. Also, it allows me to, and this is a custom thing, this is actually an add-on. Um, you can download it for the plugins for WordPress. It's called WordPress to Twitter. Um, what I've done here is took the URL, the title, and then made hashtags. And what these hashtags do is they actually tell Twitter, uh, they tell people looking at tweets what the um, what the actual tweet is about. I don't, I don't even like using that term. I think tweets sound silly, but it tells people it tells people what this little post was. So, for example, what this will come across as in Twitter is a shortened URL that goes directly to the article, the title, and then this article is about Tennessee Medicare and Tennessee Medicare Advantage. And then I've done the same thing on my categories. So in every place, the keywords are matching. So it's it's easier for Google to ascertain what it is it's looking at. It's easier for Bing to ascertain what it's looking at. Um, I can even look at this, be critical of my own post. This is something I wrote quickly. I don't waste a lot of time typing up blog posts. I just, I write things that I think 
people either need to know. Sometimes I'll write articles. When I write an article, I spend a lot more time. But you can see this is not an article. It's a 117-word news post. Um, it's quick, to the point. doesn't talk about a lot of random things and gibberish and ramble on. It just says, AEP is coming. Marketing period starts this day. So that's when we're, you know, agents are allowed to talk to you. And some plans have already released their information, but we're not allowed to contact anybody to discuss it yet. Contact me or... I can, you know, set schedule an appointment for October. They've changed AEP. That's the whole article. It's just quick. And this also gets posted out in my newsletter that goes out to everybody. I, I'm a big fan of leveraging all my content so it can be reused. But even in my own article here, I didn't use the keywords in the body, so I even messed up one of my own rules. But as I said, it, any any of these rules are not they're not rules, so to say. They're not setting set in stone. They're just good guidelines to follow so that you do get picked up. Um, but that's that's it. Um, everybody that attended earlier, thank you. I, this is this is going to sound a little different if you were at the live webinar, because for some reason I had a technical issue and the the audio recording did not work, so it had to be redone. Um, but this was a, a webinar that was done for the Independent Life Insurance Association, and my name again was Brooke Jolly. I have a website there at brookjolly.com, and I L L I A has their website. Uh, most of the people that are going to be seeing this know what it is, but um, for anybody that's one of the YouTube watchers, the ILIA is actually an organization that is for training and support for life insurance agents. Uh, highly affordable and has more educational material for somebody that is trying to learn this industry than any.